Hey there everyone, it's Jenna. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have a patio makeover for you all and I am so excited because it's finally spring here in North Carolina, but unfortunately winter has left our patio feeling a little sad and neglected. So we are going to give her a little refresh today and no matter what kind of outdoor space you may have, whether it's a huge backyard or just a tiny balcony, I'm going to give you some simple and easy tips to instantly transform that space into a luxurious outdoor oasis that has a designer look and feel to it. But of course, we're not going to break the bank because we keep things budget friendly over here on this channel. So should be a really fun video. And without further ado, let's get into the transformation. Okay, so this is what we're starting with. And as you can see, our patio has suffered from some neglect over the winter season when we rarely come out here. And unfortunately, our wind chimes broke during a storm. Our outdoor curtains have seen better days. I had these for over two years and they held up great for the first year and a half, but then they started fraying and ripping and just collecting a bunch of mildew. Our plant situation is not good either. My blue copper tone distillium died from my own neglect sadly and I chose this plant because it was evergreen so it would look colorful and fresh even in the winter but it was probably time to repot it and I failed to make sure it got enough water so we're going to have to replace it it did last me for two years however so that was pretty good but the first thing that we are going to do to freshen up the space that's absolutely free and also necessary is just give it a good clean I got rid of my sun bleached and faded pillow that were full of pollen and I started to remove all of my big furniture pieces so I could properly clean the floor and rug. Now this rug has actually held up really well. We've had it for over two years now and I honestly thought that a white rug in an outdoor space might be a bad idea but I went for it anyway because I love the brightness that it adds and because it's under our covered patio it's actually held up really great and I love the little specks of gray in it to help hide dirt and stains but it still did need a little clean so i blew off all of the dirt and pollen with our blower and then i used a vacuum to pull up all of that grime that had been caked in there and as you can see the vacuum side versus the dirty side this just really made such a difference and pretty much restored her to looking completely new again my vacuum collected so much grime it was crazy and then next i just wanted to give my furniture a little wipe down so i used a mild mrs meyers cleaner on the surface of our table and I might have to refinish it sometime this year but I think it still has a little life left for now and I also wiped down all of the furniture with a wet cloth even though they looked and felt clean it was crazy how much dirt and pollen this actually picked up and I also get a lot of questions on my patio set and I actually found this at home goods a while back for a really great price but I will link some of my favorite and similar patio sets below in the description box as well well as anything from this video that can be linked. So once everything was all clean and refreshed, it was time to replace the broken wind chimes because a cheap way to make any outdoor space feel more magical is to add the element of sound. So when I was at Walmart the other day, I noticed that they had a bunch of affordable wind chimes and I really liked this one with the faux distressed copper. They actually had a bunch of great options for affordable prices, but I really liked this one. I felt like it had that handmade vintage look to it and I didn't love the blue because I like to keep my elements very neutral and earthy to give off that organic relaxed feel. So I simply just removed the blue cross and then I added an S hook that I got off of Amazon. I also didn't love the blue weight at the bottom so I just reused the weight off of the broken one that I had but you could use lots of things here like a shell, a large bead, or maybe a piece of sea glass with copper wire around it. Lots of options. So next it was time to remove the mildewy curtains and I had been looking forward to this for a long time but I did save our leather ties and these were just made out of some leather cord that I bought at the craft store and they actually held up really well and I love the rustic look that they give off so I decided to reuse them. Someone however did not want the curtains to be thrown away and thought they made for an excellent outdoor bed. Sorry Kona girl, they gotta go. 
So when decorating an outdoor space, I feel like curtains really help to amp up the ambiance and give your outdoor space a resorty cabana-like feel, which is just so relaxing and luxurious. And I found these linen curtains on Amazon. I love the natural material and the earthy organic vibe that they give off. And when picking out curtains, it's really important to consider what you'll be using them for. And for us, something that I learned with our first set of curtains is that I don't actually use them for privacy or for blocking out the sun, which is originally what I bought them for, but now they're just mainly for aesthetics and ambiance, which is why I went for this earthy, breathable linen fabric that is so pretty when the sun shines through them at golden hour. So I'm really happy with these so far and how much of a difference that they made. And if you're wondering how I hung the rods, I have a video on that in my first patio makeover, which I will link below. So now that the curtains are up, I can hang my wind chimes and it's it's easy to incorporate textures and plants into a patio area, but I really feel like layering sound into your outdoor space is such an underrated way to enhance the ambiance, whether that's a little fountain or chimes that faintly whisper as the wind blows, it will make such a difference and create a much more relaxed atmosphere. So next I wanted to find some more outdoor pillows to help soften this sofa and make it feel more cozy and relaxing. So I headed on over to Home Goods because I feel like they have the best selection and prices. And when picking out pillows, I personally like to stay away from any super bright colors or patterns. As cute as they all are, I personally just want my space to have an earthy zen feel. And I like my color palette to be soft and earthy as well. So I settled on these striped pillows because they are neutral but would still contrast against our tan cushions and I also like the subtle and classic pattern of stripes. I just think it looks very resort-like and gives me summer in the Hamptons vibes. So now that we have all of our textiles taken care of, I wanted to remove this dead plant that has been such an eyesore and bring some life back into this patio space. I really love this planter. It was actually really reasonably priced for how large and heavy it is. It acts as a focus point and is an anchoring decor piece for our patio and it also has lots of room to plant something like a small tree. I feel like this looks like a rustic planter you would buy for hundreds of dollars at somewhere like Pottery Barn and this giant thing only costs $65 at Lowe's. However, it is very heavy so just a heads up if you go to purchase it bring someone to help you carry it because I had a problem even getting it off of our patio to repot this plant. So because this plant died from neglect and not disease, I wanted to reuse the soil to save money since there was a lot of it in this gigantic planter. So I just kind of raked through the roots with my fingers, breaking up all of the loose soil in there and said goodbye to our poor plant. Now to replace it, I actually just got the exact same thing. This is a blue cascade distillium and I love these because they are evergreen so they keep our patio looking fresh year round as long as I remember to water it every every so often. And what I really like is that this has a very similar look to an olive tree, but it's just a lot easier to take care of and was super affordable at my local garden center. So even though we are reusing this soil, we need to refresh it and just make sure that it has enough nutrients for our new plant. So I just took a big bag of compost and mixed some of that into this soil to refresh it. And then I planted this new guy in there and I did make sure to break up the roots a little bit since this tree was a little root bound and I just wanted to encourage growth and then I added a layer of fresh potting soil to the top for some more added nutrients and that was it and something that always helps a space to look more luxurious and whimsical is just to layer in as much greenery as you can so I wanted to use some smaller planters around the base of this bigger one to accent it so I grabbed these two planters that I did a faux aging technique to in my previous video and then I headed off to one of my favorite local gardens centers to pick out some plants.
so I ended up finding these butterfly blue scabiosas, also known as the pincushion flowers. And these were $5 each and are a perennial, meaning that you plant them once and they come back year after year. And I also picked out some rosemary because I love the rustic look of it. And I always use this in my cooking. I love using fresh rosemary with my potatoes, chicken, and quiches. So I thought it'd be a good one to have on hand because not only is it aesthetic, but it's also useful and versatile in the kitchen as well. Now, I've been hearing a lot about these butterfly blue pincushion flowers, and I thought they'd be such a pretty way to add a soft lavender color to my patio. And I did use a little bit of garden lime when planting these. I didn't film it for some reason, but just wanted to let you all know because they do like sweeter soil. But these are great because they are non-toxic to pets, and they are supposed to have a super long bloom time, meaning they bloom from spring to almost the first frost if you take care of them and deadhead them. So I'm really excited about these and I just love how these look layered against the large concrete planter. Just by adding these two extra pots, it really gives off more of a cottagey, secret garden-like feel to this space and also adds some visual interest with the layers and varying heights of the planters. I love that we used a combo of florals to help soften the space and also some rosemary to conveniently have on hand for recipes. So next I wanted to do something to add some visual interest to our coffee table. So I used this melamine tray that I found at Target for less than $20 and I've had this thing outdoors for years now and it's held up really well. So it's perfect for corralling things like citronella candles, coasters, or plants. I also wanted to use this handled bowl planter that I found for a great price at TJ Maxx. It didn't have a drainage hole though and what I wanted to plant in it needed some good drainage. So I just picked up one of these plastic bowls at my local Lowe's and poked some holes in it so that my plants could drain easily. And to keep up with the European rustic theme that I have going on, I just grabbed some lavender and some more rosemary to plant. And the reason why I picked these two herbs is that number one, they do well when planted next to each other. And also they're just both super fragrant because my goal for the centerpiece on this coffee table was to incorporate the sense of smell. So whenever a gentle breeze blows in, I get the aroma of these lovely herbs and it just really helps to add to the ambiance when the wind chimes are singing and I get delicious whiffs of my sweet smelling plants. Now, another place that I wanted to dress up a little bit was this empty corner. And if you remember from my spring decorate with me last year, I actually purchased a fountain to have that peaceful sound of water running over the river rocks. But what I found was that it attracted lots of mosquitoes and frogs. And the frogs were always hiding in our patio cushions, which just kind of got annoying after a while. So sadly, I had to do away with the fountain, but as you can see, this is a very small space, so I had to carefully think about what I wanted to put here without overcrowding it. So when I was at Ikea a little while back, I spotted these black indoor-outdoor plant stands that were the perfect compact size. And I also fell in love with this little terrarium. So what I decided to do was just assemble the bottom shelf of the stand and then place the terrarium on top so it looked like one seamless unit. And this is so perfect for like a little mini herb garden or maybe to use as a mini greenhouse for starting some seeds in. You can just prop the opening up for some airflow and I love how both practical and aesthetic this is. So again, to keep up with that European rustic theme, I used these faux aged terracotta pots from my last video and just planted some herbs in them. I chose thyme because I use this one a lot in my cooking also and how sweet and rustic does it look in this little pot. I also planted a lot of mojito mint and in fact, this little herb garden is mostly mint because I just think it's such a refreshing herb to have on hand for drinks and cocktails in the summer and mint is also very fast growing so we will see how it does in these pots hopefully they don't need to be repotted too quickly but I just love how these all look popped on this little stand and I also added this watering can that I got from Walmart for both a practical and aesthetic touch
And that is it. That is how we took this patio that had been neglected and sad looking and gave it new life. And now it's ready to be enjoyed for the seasons to come. We did this by making sure the space was layered with greenery of all types, greenery just for visual interest and aesthetics, greenery for scent, and also for using in the kitchen. We incorporated flowers to add softness, and these can also be cut and brought inside to decorate interior spaces as well. We incorporated simple patterns and organic textures and textiles to keep the space feeling earthy and allowing it to blend in seamlessly with its surroundings. We also utilized empty corners and filled them with aesthetically displayed plants, giving the space life and function. We also used the sense of sound and smell to enhance the overall ambiance. And now I believe it is time to harvest some mint leaves, make myself a little happy hour mojito, and enjoy some fetch with Kona while we wait for Mike to get home from work. I am so happy with how this little spring refresh came out and I can't wait to spend more time in my mini outdoor oasis in the seasons to come. All right, everyone, that about wraps up this video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing this patio transformation. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. It really does help to support my channel and make sure you're subscribed because I post new home decor content every single week. So make sure you don't miss any more of that. I will be doing some more outdoor projects and some gardening this season. So stay tuned for that. And I just wanna thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you have a fabulous week and I will see you all in my next one. Bye.